This is a Sports Catastrophe production. Hey there, how there, ho there. It's Jeff Cutter Diving. Welcome you to another Sports Catastrophe on this day. And on this day, November 15, 1970, the Cincinnati Bengals took care of the Cleveland Browns. And if you're thinking, oh, it's just a boring game, what are you doing? Well, it's the nature of the game. Of why it's doing it. So, we need definitely need some context on this. So it's 1970. It's the first season since the AFL-NFL merger, as the AFL teams would head to the NFL, and some NFL teams were paid to move to the AFC instead of the NFC. And Cleveland was one of them. Cleveland and Cincy both were fighting tooth and nail. Cincy was in the AFL. Cleveland was in the NFL. Cleveland knows about being from an upstart league themselves, as Cleveland was part of the All-American Football Conference before it went to it went to crap, and then the NFL took it, San Francisco, and I believe the New York team or something like that. Or was it Baltimore? I can't remember who else they took in the AFC. But regardless, Cleveland was the upstart to 1950 who shocked everyone by winning the NFL title. But anyway, Cleveland had one main guy, Paul Brown, who was the architect of why Cleveland looked good. They had Jim Brown, Mary Motley. Be quiet. I'm getting to the point. And all that. But the Cleveland Browns had a problem. Our Modell and Paul Brown would always fight. Modell was the owner. Brown was the architect. Unfortunately, Paul Brown was released by Cleveland management. He fouled revenge, so he decided to set up a good team in Cleveland's most rivalous, Ohio City, and that's Cincinnati. So Cincinnati got themselves an NFL, well, NFL such an NFL franchise. <coughs> um, guess who was the main guy? Paul Brown. And he decided to design his jerseys, his team's jerseys, kind of like Cleveland, with black being the main color instead of brown. Cleveland was furious. They said, you're trying to copy us in helmet design and jerseys? What the hell are you thinking? But the Bengals would have big letter bangles on their jerseys, on their helmets. <coughs> <coughs> so in a sense, Paul Brown was making a carbon copy of the Cleveland Browns, turning them into the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, Cleveland had crushed Cincy in Cleveland the previous game of 1970. They had to face each other twice within the division. The Bengals going into this game were 2-6. and six. The Browns going into this game were 4-4. Four and four. The Bengals looked terrible. Well, that's when things changed. In the first quarter, the Browns did take a 7-0 lead on a Leroy Kelly touchdown rush with Don Cockroft kicking the extra point. After a field goal made it 10-0, Cleveland looked good, but in the third quarter, uh, in the second quarter, Virgil Carter, remember him? I don't. He threw a touchdown pass to Jess Phillips with Horse Ruhlman getting the extra point. 10-7. The third quarter happened, and Paul Robinson ran in for a touchdown, making a 14-10 Cincy. But in some strange reason, in the 35-degree weather, Fahrenheit weather, I mean, the Bengals held Cleveland in check, and the Bengals got revenge on the Browns, and Paul Brown got revenge on the team that sucked here, punched him out, and kind of why the Browns are named the Browns. So after Paul Brown. Cleveland did have more first downs, but the rushing attack since he got them with 210 rushing yards to 153 for Cleveland. Since he turned the ball over three times, but still won the game. Mike Phipps the Purdue, former Purdue quarterback was the quarterback for Cleveland, going 11 for 25, 170 yards, and a pick. Rushing, Kelly went 20 under tap 60, only for 60 yards. Phipps had 57 yards on the ground. The top receiver was Milt Moray for Cleveland, three catches, 78 yards. The great Garrett Collins had two receptions for 30 yards. Cincy was led by Virgil Carter. If we look at Virgil Carter, he came from... Where did he come from? Please tell me what's more info. Oh, he he was He comes from Brigham Bur Young University, so he was the best BYU quarterback before Steve Young and Jim McMahon. So yeah, Virgil Carter played for the Browns Bears for a few years, and then he went to Cincy, 
it actually did quite decent for the Bengals. So, yeah, so Virgil Carter, 10 for 17, 123 yards, and a touchdown. Rushing, he even ran 110 yards and was the leading rusher for the Bengals. Never mind Paul Robinson, 63 running yards. The top receiver was Chip Myers, three times for 67 yards. So, in hindsight, you know, the Browns screwed over Paul Brown and he got his revenge with the Bengals. The rivalry would be kind of mixed bag in the 70s. I mean, Cleveland weren't that good in the 70s. The Bengals weren't that good in the 70s. So it took to the 80s to get the rivalry to really with two good teams within their division. But yeah, it was the birth of a big interstate rivalry. And you can't beat that. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.